Hello everybody, welcome back to the table. Today we're going to do an unbagging for a matter of honor from Tiny Battle Publishing by Jacques Rabier. I'm hoping that's correct. So we're going to go ahead and just pull the components out. First we've got the rule book we'll take a look at. Okay. We've got color, which is always nice. We'll see how many pages total we have here. I like the little bit larger text for my little bit older eyes. Yeah, really nice pictures here. I'm not going to go over all the points, but um, yeah, it looks easy enough to read. And I'm sure there's good examples in here. You got sequence of play, event cards, drawing phase, impulse phase, impulse phase. You get movement, fire, easy drawing, you can pass. Okay, a few things there. Close combat phase, a recovery phase, then an end of turn phase. So it looks like eight segments there to a turn. And good, we have a nice long example of play. And the graphics are really nice. This is printed really well. Very clear, easy to read. A nice ad for Phantom Division. That was an add-on for the um, what was it? Was it during one of the reprints? And then you got that. That was like an extra add-on there. And then some frequently asked questions at the end. Okay, good. So we're looking at approximately 10 pages of rules. But in actuality, it's probably more like eight, eight pages of rules because examples of play. And then, of course, sometimes the first page is kind of a introduction. So maybe seven pages of rules. That's that's good. And we'll have to see how the game plays. And then on the back, just a couple of ads. All right, and then you got Matter of Honor. Okay. And so what exactly is Matter of Honor? Well, let's read it. So long before it became the site of Charles Lindbergh's landing after his first air crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, and later of a renowned international air show, the town of Les Bourget, in the outskirts of Paris, was the scene of a bloody battle between the French army and the Prussian forces besieging Paris in October 1870 during the Franco-Prussian War. A Matter of Honor is an action-packed two-player tactical board game using a simple but effective area impulse activation system. The game captures the dramatic intensity of the Battle of Les Bourget and its desperate house-to-house -house fighting. Added Chrome includes a random event card system featuring historical events that players use to influence the outcome of the battle. Units are companies of elite Prussian guards facing determined French regulars and national guardsmen in a fight to the death over a matter of honor. Sweet. Yeah, it sounds good. I've been waiting on like an area impulse game to try. I mean, I've got a couple, but in a small footprint, I think will be good. And we'll have to see how it solos. That's sometimes a question people ask is, how does it solo? I'll let you know because I do plan on playing this solo because a lot of my friends that play war games are into miniature war games, not so much the board games. So I usually play all my board games solo. So we will, we will try this one out solo. Here we've got two player aid cards. Let's take a look at them. So I don't know if they're labeled necessarily player aid one, player aid two, but we'll look at this one first. Uh, first of all, this is very nice quality cardstock. This one, and it feels nice and glossy. So this this feels better than just say, you know, someone printed it out on a printer. Uh, obviously this was printed on a printer, but I mean, this is like a really nice cardstock they use, nice glossy. So we got um, combat resolution charts, so fire resolution. Seems like quite a few steps in there. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's easy. It's just, I'm looking there, quite a few little steps in doing it. So we'll have to see how it is in action. And then close combat resolution there. But looks like it's detailed out very, very well. Terrain effects chart. Perfect. How it affects your movement. Boundaries, which apparently are going to be important because, again, it's an area. So you have to know. I'd be able to identify your boundaries and how crossing those boundaries make a difference. Special rules. Counters. I think the counters look good. Uh, they're going to be kind of the smaller size. Well, no, they're pretty good size. Well... They look pretty good size. They, 
I've been playing, <laughs> once you play a lot of games and then you got games with various size counters, especially some war games that are pretty small, I'm looking at those going, well, those aren't that bad. But they're definitely not one inch counters, but they do look very, very good. But the artwork on them looks fantastic, just off the little, little um, example here, looks nice. Close combat markers, control markers, abbreviated sequence of play. So your event cards phase, impulse phase, and impulse phase had sub-segments for your actions. Close combat phase, recovery phase, end of turn phase. All right, straightforward enough so far. Here's another one, the setup chart. One player would take the role of the General Bellemare and control the French forces as the French player, while the Prussian player will control the Prussian units of General Bodritsky. Event cards, so on and so forth. Game out. Okay, cool. Setup of the French units on the ready side. Perfect. Looks like this will have uh, quite a few counters. I mean, not as many as larger games, but this is going to be a pretty good amount. Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12. There's one there. Oh, there we go. Then you got 16, 20, 24, 26, 30, 34 for the Prussians. And then optional free setup rules. Ooh, okay, I like that. That's good. A lot of times people will look at something when it's a battle for, you know, like one specific battle, then people wonder, well, what's the replayability? Well, I mean, obviously you can play a game as many times as you want. However, when you have something like this that says optional free setup rules, that to me, I think is a nice little touch because that does add replay value. It says right there, adds replay value because now you can set up anywhere that's nice. Uh, which means you could probably, if you had other similar looking maps, ooh. Well, we'll have to see how this plays because this, this could be the start of a nice gaming engine for some sort of area control kind of game. That's cool. All right, then we're gonna pull this out together. So we've got some counters. And this is what I'm always checking for is how easy do they pop out? Uh, a lot of times that, you know, the quality of the counters for Ziploc games can vary greatly from company to company. And even sometimes within the same publisher, you know, they cut one day, they don't cut so well another day. And these are coming out very well. A couple of them definitely popped out easier than others. But overall, these are coming out pretty good. I'll probably take an X-Acto knife because the, the nubbins on some of these are holding them together pretty good. I know it's, it's interesting because some people don't care too much about the counters. I mean, I think everybody cares about the counters, but what I mean is they don't care if they trim corners or anything like that. They just punch the counters, play the game. And these are coming out pretty good. Uh, one complaint though I've seen people read in comment sections is Normally with Tiny Battle Publishing games, they complain how they're very sticky on edges. These, I am very happy to say, are not sticky at all. They actually feel like well-polished counters. I mean, I used to be able to take some and kind of stick to my finger, and it would just kind of stick. These are, I don't feel any sticking at all, which is fantastic. So these are actually really well punched and put together counters. There's no sticky edges. And they're coming out pretty good. So they're cut very well. Yeah, the nubs are still a little thick on some of them. But again, you know, that's actually not a problem. I got a little X-Acto knife that I can use. That way I don't accidentally tear the paper. So these are great. I think these are good counters. But the one additional thing, speaking to the corner clippers, yes. The nubs are on the middle, so you're still going to have nubs on your counters even if you clip the corners. So for this game, counter clipping is just for an aesthetic look. So I'll still do it anyway, but yeah, that is my only con I just, as a corner clipper, I don't like games that put the nubs in the center. This has very minimal connection points on the corner, so this is definitely a aesthetics value for clipping your counters in this one. Yeah, some of these counters are just popping out really good. Some of them are just a little stiff there, but um, it's they're stuck at the nubs. So they're going to come out really, really well. So thank goodness for that. And 
no sticky. I even tried a couple here off of this the uh, the mini counter listing here, and again, no sticky edges. So consistent print in the counters. I also don't see any misaligned. I mean, a person could argue, oh look, it's ever so slightly over, but in general, I haven't seen any any counters that are grossly misaligned. So this is great. The counter job in this game is fantastic. So I'm just gonna pick these up. And the artwork looks really good too. I mean, I could move the camera in. Let's just move it down a little bit without giving you too much vertigo there as I uh, shift. But if we just, and then stop the camera from wobbling. Yeah, they look good though. I mean, I like the artwork on them. They're very easy to read. You only got a few numbers to track. You can clearly see the unit. So again, I think the counter work on this particular game, top notch. Very, very good. So we'll set that aside. Can't pick them up with my fingernails very well. And I had an X-Acto, speaking of X-Acto blades, I did have one over here and I put it down somewhere. Let's see if I've got it handy. Well, I was not anticipating, I didn't plan very good, so we'll just grab a little blade. That way you don't have to watch me struggle too much with the really tight shrink wrapping. So, excellent. You get to watch me struggle anyway, but just not as much. So we'll see what kind of cards we have. The cards look really nice too. This might be, dare I say, probably one of the better printed Tiny Battle Publishing games I've opened up. And the cards are great. I mean, they look like standard playing cards. I like rounded edges. And they have a nice firmness to them. These are great cards. The artwork is good. Very legible. Fantastic. In phase, reshuffle. Yeah, these are really nice cards. Got some, looks like the Prussians get a deck and the French get a deck. This is great. We won't look at every single card, but you know, uh, they've got pictures, looks like a different picture for free each type of card, so you don't have repeating pictures. Good stuff. Yeah, Opportunity Fire, so they got the same artwork on the same card type. Yeah. These are really nice cards. Again, fantastic. And the big thing that people will ask about is the map. So being a Ziploc bag kind of a game, it is a paper map. I'm going to shift the camera back up so it'll probably go wonky here for a second on you, sorry. I think this is an 11 by 17. That's like a standard size for Tiny Bow Publishing. But I like this. So this is the map laid out in its entirety. So if I lift the camera up a bit, you can see, looks like most of it here. Little turn track. Okay, what I like about this is one, all, all that's on here is a turn record track. They could have put that on one of the other cards. I, I'm not, I prefer maps that have very little, if any, play aids on them. So just having that one little turn track here is acceptable, it's fine. Uh, but otherwise, the artwork looks good. Again, everything is very legible. This is a really well printed map. I'm very happy with this. We'll have to see how it holds up to usage because again, being a paper map, they crease really easy. But on initial look through, what I like here is it's not already getting frayed. And you know, right here, it's turning white in a couple spots from the fold, but overall, this is really good. Clearly read everything. Here's the cemetery, the numbers. This is great. I know this sounds more like a review, you know, if I'm trying to tell you how good everything is. So far, components and what you get in this game are really nice. So let's just summarize. You get your map, you get a deck of event cards. How many exactly? You get uh, 24 event cards. You get another really well done rule book. 
about seven pages of rules to play the game. You get, I think it said 120 counters. Does it say the size? Yes, it does. 5.8. So not quite, just a little over, a little bit, just slightly bigger than half inch. Maybe, I don't know what I played recently that had half inch counters. But I was, that's why I was like, oh, these are pretty good size. But 120 5 8 inch counters, and then you get two really solid put together play aids. And that is a matter of honor by Tiny Battle Publishing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.